Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week, when you wish upon a star. My name is David and I'd like to know, how do we measure the distance to the nearest star? For distances as great as interstellar ones, we need something a bit more specialised. Hello, my name's Simon Singh, and um, I'm sorry I'm whispering, but I'm here in the Houses of Parliament as we get ready to launch our libel reform bill, but that's a whole other story. I'm also the author of Big Bang, and I suppose I'm here to try and explain to you how we measure the distances to the stars. Now, the way you do this is by using something called parallax. Now, that means that you measure the, the angle to a star using a telescope, and then you move your telescope to a different position, and you look for a shift in the angle to the star. Now, the problem is the stars are so very, very far away, you need to move your telescope a long way in order to get a perceptible shift in angle. And a few metres, a few kilometres, a few hundred kilometres just isn't enough. And it wasn't until the 19th century that an astronomer, Friedrich Bessel, moved his telescope to the other side of the sun. He took a measurement in July from the Earth, and then he waited six months for the Earth to go right round the other side of the sun. He took another measurement, and even though the Earth and his telescope had moved such a vast distance, the shift in angle to the star was just one six thousandth of a degree, a tiny shift. But that tiny shift was enough for him to work out the distance to the local stars around us. Now, to give you an idea how far away those stars are, it takes about eight minutes for light from the sun to reach us on Earth. It takes over four years for light from our closest star to reach us. Um, And that's how you measure the distances to the stars. Parallax is great for doing what is essentially a giant and time-consuming triangulation. Gold Star goes to former Astrogazer for his response, which was very similar to Simon Singh's model answer. And Rade added that some Cepheid variables can be even more variable than previously thought, so some estimates of their distances may not be entirely accurate. Next week, we're sticking with astronomical bodies. Hi, Naked Scientists. This is Taylor Sharp from Vancouver calling. And I had a question about the Earth and gravitational forces. I'm wondering which part of the Earth experiences the most and the least gravity, since as you move closer to the center of the Earth, gravity reduces to almost zero. Thank you very much. Where would you least like to get out the bathroom scales? Answers to chris at thenakedscientists.com or write them down on the forum, and that's at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.